it's the April 8th, 2015 meeting of the Sherburn Board of Selectmen. Uh, I'm going to ask our town administrator to please read the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, we will um, start with the re a vote to approve or amend the agenda and add topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance. And I have one of those items. Um, and then a public comment period of not more than 10 minutes. And then a one-day liquor license for the Pine Hill Community School Association auction. And then a review of warrant articles that selectmen will speak on at the, or have speak on or have presentations on at the town meeting. And the town administrator report selectmen reports set the next meeting for April 15, 2015. Sign the payroll warrant and then adjourn to executive session, not to return to open session. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, do we have any, any uh, amendments? amendments? The one amendment would be um, to amend the agenda to remove item number two, reserve fund transfer requests, uh, that the town accountant has requested <coughs> that that be moved to the next meeting, which would be April 15th. Okay, very good. Uh, so I move to approve the agenda as amended. Okay, second. Further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Good. And I, I should uh, also mention, because I've been asked to announce that this meeting is being recorded, it's being taped for uh, cable television, community uh, television, but it's also being recorded uh, by the board as well as by an audience member, so just so everybody's aware. Okay, so. It may be. Okay, Mr. Campbell, you're up first on public comment. Well, thank you. I'm here tonight to invite the Board of Selectmen and our viewing audience to attend the SOS-sponsored Candidates Night, which will be this coming Monday night. The format we're going to use is similar to what the League of Women Voters had used in the past uh, to uh, bring in an outside moderator. We're going to have all of the candidates from major offices here, the three members for the Board of Selectmen, the uh, two candidates for the Board of Health, the town treasurer, and the planning board member. Our moderator, who is from Holliston and a very involved local official over there, has come up with some pretty penetrating questions. So penetrating that we decided to send them to all the candidates ahead of the meeting, not to, not to uh, surprise them with anything. So we expect it to be a, um, a good evening for a chance for people to really understand these can't better understand the candidates, what they <coughs> intend to, would like to uh, accomplish, and for, in case of the three members of the Board of Selectmen, to interact with one another with some questions she has for them. So I uh, encourage uh, everyone to come. It will be televised, but for those who do come, we hope to have time for audience questions to the candidates uh, in the meeting. So uh, we think it will be a, a good thing. Again, it's next Monday night here in this very room starting at 7.30. You should sometime this week get a uh, flyer in the mail that uh, reminds you as well, and we'd like to see a good turnout. Thank you. Great. Hey, thanks, Jim, and thanks to SOS for uh, thinking to put this on. That's great. Well, thank you. Excellent. Um, and we have another uh, public comment by Chief Thompson. Good evening. Uh, very briefly, and, and actually I have to give uh, credit where credit is due. Sue Tyler asked me to announce this to the town. Um, effective uh, April 7th of 2015, which was yesterday, um, there's been a legal update, an act relative to the use of headlights. And if, an, if I could read this very briefly, the new law amends general law, chapter 85, section 15, requiring the use of headlights and taillights when windshield wipers are on and when insufficient light or unfavorable atmospheric conditions reduce driver visibility by 500 feet. So basically the law change means that when it's raining and you put your windshield wipers on or it's snowing, you have to put your windshield wipers on, you're supposed to put your headlights on. Great, so. thank you. That's good, fair warning for everybody. Okay. And the enforcement on that is five bucks, right? And it hits your insurance too. Starts at five bucks. Starts at five okay. bucks. Is it an, it's an insurance uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, surcharge it's event? Yes. Okay, great, good. Great. So it's worth putting your lights on. <laughs> so much for my auto lights. Yes. Um, okay, so we have the one-day liquor license uh, item on the uh, agenda. And David, why don't you set that up for us? Sure. The Pine Hill Community School Association, known as the CSA, is holding a fundraising auction on May 2nd, 2015 from 5.30 to 10 p.m. 
at the Pine Hill School. The licensee is Pauline Bowles, Catering and Staffing Services of Natick, and the expected number of attendees is about 175. This is an event that's held each year, and the police department has signed off on the application with a requirement of one detail officer. The fire department has signed off with no requirements, and the primary contact for the event is Sarah O'Connell, the CSA auction co-chair. Okay. The documents in front of you have a valid insurance certificate naming the town as additional insured and um, the license for signature should be in the signature folder. Okay, and the, and the organization's asked for a waiver of the license fee as well, I think. Yes, they did. Yes, that was in their letter. Yes. So that should be part of any uh, the, uh, motion. The waiver. Now we have Mr. Dorensis. Doing the CSA auction. We'll, we'll, we'll let you make your way up here. We just started with this uh, liquor license item, Paul. Okay. So do you want a motion or? Yeah, motion would be great. Sure. I move to approve the one-day liquor license for Pauline Bowles of Catering and Staffing Services of Natick for the fundraising auction event. Sponsored by the Pine Hill Community School Association on May 2nd, 2015, with the chief of the police chief's requirement of a single detail officer and waiver of the $50 license fee. Okay, and, and I can second that since Paul's just getting settled here. Uh, is there any discussion? Anybody, Paul? Peter? No. Okay. All in favor of that? Yes. Aye. Big success. And abstaining. Paul's abstaining. Okay. That's great. Thanks. Um, We've deleted the reserve fund transfer request from the uh, from the agenda. Uh, so the next item is review of warrant articles that the selectmen will speak on at an annual town meeting. I, I wanted to add an item to this agenda, uh, but I had um, sent by email. Is that something you needed added today? I asked David to check on that, yes. but he couldn't reach you. Okay, um, I guess we could reopen the agenda to, to add that item. It's something that wasn't reasonably expected 48 hours uh, you could do it under before, reports. or you can do it under selectman reports. Sure, do, do it under selectman reports. Selectman That's easier. Reports. Does it I'm sorry, does it, does it require a vote? Uh, I'm looking for a vote, yeah. Okay. All right, so, so let's, uh, do we have a motion so, to amend the So I move to uh, open and amend the agenda to add the item Paul's talking about. Okay, why don't you. Might as well, yeah. Can you just describe the items so we have it? This is the uh, southern end of Route 16 resurfacing project. Okay, so resurfacing Route 16. So we'll add that after the review of the warrant article since we're ahead of schedule. Uh, okay, so do we have a second on... Peter's motion, I guess I can second it. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay, thanks, Paul. All right, so uh, review of our warrant articles. So the, the warrant um, is finalized, posted. The advisory committee has gotten out their, um, their notice with the full warrant and their recommendations. And um, I was just looking for some guidance on what presentations the selectmen would like to see given regarding their articles um, or uh, if there were com <clears throat> special comments you wanted to make regarding other folks articles okay anybody's got any thoughts on that to start yeah, off there's a couple that I'd like to participate in speaking on but certainly not looking to be the exclusive presenter I'm not well, that's a question, I guess, David. You're looking for information on what, what presenters we would need. This is Corey's There's request a presentation that, that, that we have a formal presentation. We let her know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that we can start putting it together. That, would, that wouldn't prevent us from speaking on something, but just no, if, you if we need a slideshow or something, she wants to know it. Right. And, right. and um, I mean, I, I, know, I know one that may warrant doing that is the, um, you know, the financial items, the, the uh, financial director accountant item. So the governance, um, governance, governance that's is being brought forward. Well, governance is putting that forward. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the um, the other. The if you take capital items. Yeah. For example, that's what I was going to say. The other one. Advisory will, be will provide background in their mailer, as well as the basis of their recommendation for action or no action. Right. Mm -hmm. So they'll be fairly self-explanatory as it is. But I would presume that we 
might want Ed, for example, to give a presentation it's about the trucks yeah. and the overview of uh, equipment okay. and things like that. That, that I think, is you know worthwhile because it's a big slug of money. Right. Um, In the meeting with the um, moderator yesterday, I, I told her that I thought that that would be the case, um, but uh, she was just trying to remove some, some presentations that um, weren't needed if they weren't going to be controversial and the advisory thought that they it, the presentation wouldn't be needed based on, the on their descriptive yeah on the trucks. but we had the presentation done so i was thinking we'll just have ed to have the presentation ready right so he'd be waiting in the wings if right it'd be loaded and yeah okay um David, also the Woodland Street item, although that's our item, I think there's a residence group in traffic safety who'd probably be better prepared to present something on that, but yes, I think it yeah. does require a presentation of some sort. Yeah. Okay. So that's the one I was, I said there was a couple that I wanted to speak on. That's one of them. Yeah. And I told the moderator that we, were con that we would be working with traffic safety or contacting them to let them know. Okay. Yeah. And I've been in touch with the residents just to recommend that they show up and and uh, explain their position on that too. What about uh, personnel, the changes there to the personnel admin plan? Do you think anything's warranted on that one or not? Um, um, Mary Wolf from uh, the chair of advisory thought that there wasn't going to be any issues with that. Um, she had been talking to um, Fred Abdallahad on whether there should be anything additional and they had arrived that they weren't going to do anything. So just being available for questions should somebody have, uh, right. you know, not understand what's right. going on. I don't know. It looks like Jim left. I know uh, SOS had had some comments in one of their meet, uh, minute, meeting minutes that I saw and I passed on to Fred Abdallahad where they were uh, thinking about, I guess, amendments or comments on the work from home policy. Um, you know, my, my view on that one personally is that we could do any number of refinements to it, but the policy that's in here now serves a purpose, and it's right. probably a good idea to get something passed rather than try to make it perfect at this point. Um, as we saw at the advisory hearing, you can always raise unanswerable questions about, about certain applications and how they would be handled under this, but for the most part, it's pretty clear what it's trying to do. Right. So I mean, that, that's all by way of saying, I don't know if we need a presentation, but if we did need one, I think it would be because people were trying to add riders to it or had a lot of different uh, questions about if we're going to do X, why don't we also do Y and Z? Okay. I had checked off also Article 19, which is the kennel one. That's one that I had wanted to speak on, just to explain the legal background behind it. But well, I think that's a good idea. Nothing may it's not a form. I'm not talking about a formal presentation. You're not going to bring a dog in or something to, ha to have, <laughs> have it help you with the presentation. Well, I have a fabulous puppy. <laughs> Show her off. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think you have to. Um, I mean, you don't have to disclose right now or sign up for what you, uh, what articles you want to comment on. But, it, but the primary thing is to make sure that the we get something to the moderator. To know that we're developing a presentation and that's going to be so i think we've got there. traffic safety on yeah. on goulding street and ed on the trucks yeah. potentially so if the kennel isn't going to be a presentation that's just going to be comments at the time i'll just give well, her a heads up that you're giving a an oral presentation yeah it's not a presentation on the assumption that someone is going to say something about it this is to give the town clerk the powers under state law to issue appropriate licenses and I'm not sure the town clerk is going to speak on it um, I'm not sure if anybody's going to speak on it so if it's a, a non-controversial thing and nobody has any questions about it then neither will I but if somebody somebody gets up and wants to know more information who's going to respond to it so i thought maybe right. Right. i'd be one of those responding to it yeah okay yeah. any uh, other uh, any other presentations what did you guys uh, have any strong feelings about article 15 i don't i mean we 
tried to bring it forward with advisory. It was a close vote. They were 5-4, but against it. Mm -hmm. And their motion is no action. So the question is whether you want to keep hitting that one up or I'm not sure uh, let it, it die a death. I'm not sure it needs yeah. a presentation. I certainly want to speak to it. I mean, I, to I, it. Yeah. I'll say the same thing I said at advisory. I okay. feel like we have an obligation to call them like we see them and, and right. to make a recommendation to the town. And, uh, you know, the fact that the town hasn't accepted that recommendation in the past doesn't mean I feel any worse about bringing it back to them with my recommendation again. Yeah. What about your famous uh, uh, chart, Peter, with the little boxes on oh, it? Oh, the one I have my bag right here, Paul? Yeah, I I think you're right. Right. You <laughs> no, I think we'll, we'll leave that one for the you know, Sherburn yeah. Museum someday, <laughs> all right? What's the subject of this article? The article 15, Elliot, was the appointed uh, the uh, appointed treasurer article. Okay. It would be subject to a uh, to a vote, but it would be a request to have the town authorize and, that. And if I could just ask on Article 27, which was the rezoning, it was the citizens article rezoning that uh, the um, what do you call 59 it? 59 North Main. Yeah, well, 59 North Main. So I guess it's really the the other one, the change of the zoning. Reg. So Article 26, where did they fall on that? And I assume Gino's going to make a presentation on that or somebody, David? Okay. Yes. Okay. And is 27 so, a, a negative recommendation based on the advisory hearing, or is it because they haven't proceeded any further? Um, yeah, sorry, okay. I cut you off. It was 27. That's 59 North Meester. Yeah. Uh, I think that was just because there was no preliminary site plan that was submitted and uh, that there was no, not even an active developer at the time. There was at one time when this was going, but there isn't right now for someone to present a plan. So where does that stand now, though? Has, it, has anything changed since the advisory hearing on that, as far as you know? No. no. So can I just ask a little bit more on 26? Because that was a citizen's petition, but it sounds like planning is taking over on that. Is that how that's going to... Or if there are no pitfalls, David, with either in terms of planning, stepping in on a citizen's petition and 26, um, revising it. 26 appears here with the planning board's supported amendments. Right. So I think that this one is. Um, well, that, the, my only question is because we're fairly, you know, you have to take verbatim what the citizen's petitions are in the warrant. Right. And now what advisory's motion is dealing with is something different than that and something that's been adopted, if you will, by right. the planning board. And I just want to be sure the ducks are in a row. Well, they're, moving the to have, they're moving to have the article amended. We met, yeah, we I met with... I understand. Yeah, we met with Barbara yesterday, and when that She's was on, one of the issues. She's on board with all that. Okay. Yeah. That's, that was just where I wanted to find yeah. out. And Susan, did you say you have an update on the status of that rezoning article? Yeah, my understanding as far as the, the, the portion with the builder and putting in a, a, a bigger project down there, that has not happening. It's now three single family homes. So I don't think that part of the article will go forward because okay. there is no preliminary plan that's been submitted because apparently the plans have changed. And as far as the wording on the, uh, the, the wording is all done with the changes, advisories accepted. And we've already got the forms and this right. will submit it at a town meeting and just like any other article where there's just an amendment on the board of the wording. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's 59 North Main. Yeah, they're going for a variance with the zoning board. Yeah, that's that's what that's what I was yeah, asking. For for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they want to proceed on single family because they couldn't yeah. get a developer on the larger project. Which is a shame. That's a good location in town for walkable, you know, more modest sized housing. But they they've not told me that they're not continuing to look they just for want to, they just want to get the options yeah it's lined up okay um, Good. so 27 would, would not uh, move forward but 26 I would think would have a lot of discussion around it yeah yeah okay. but that's not really our discussion no I no I just was curious what we were talking about. yeah that's their, that's their discussion okay um, so if we're done with that arc we can talk about the resurfacing Paul this is a uh, is your baby here? Oh, we finished with the warrant. Well, unless, unless anybody else has something else on the on the well, list. How about some of these capital projects? I think we talked about the truck and the school committee would do the school one and library do the library. Library do the library, yeah.
the chief, will, the fire chief, will be there for the dry hydrant maintenance. Okay. I can answer any questions about the transfer station fencing or the town building surge protection. Yeah. Um, How about the town hall parking and access study? Yeah, I, I can yeah. speak to that, and I think probably Nancy yeah. has to speak to that maybe. Okay. Okay. Route 16. Yes, the proposal here. I sent everybody. Share that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that, if you sent that today, I couldn't read it. So. Oh, this was. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I could open it. Yeah. All right. So was a report from Ed. Huh? Oh, good. So what this is, is uh, 12,223 feet of Route 16 from the Holliston Town line to the intersection of Washington and Solomon Street. The roadway was last resurfaced in 2006. The expected lifespan is approximately 8 to 10 years. So we are in the more than eight but less than ten span at this point. R Route 16, I think the case for state funding is because this portion of Route 16 is considered a main arterial route through Sherburne and serves as a major com commuter route to access Framingham, Natick, and Boston. So uh, Ed has defined the project. He's costed it out at $430,457. And what I'm looking for is a vote to authorize the pursuit of state funding, that piece of it. And mechanically, what does that entail, Paul? Is that something you would do by a direct request to somebody, or is, yeah. do we need a letter, or how does that work? No, I, I don't need a letter. Okay. So you just want the sense of the board in terms of doing that? All right, so moved. Second. <laughs> I'm just mindful that there was, if you remember, that $4.6 million yeah. appropriation, and we all got kind of blindsided by it. So we didn't know well, this is a from. resurfacing, though. It's not a reconstruction, right? Right. So this is the same road no with wider. no pavement on it. No, no uh, land takings. No land no. no trees coming down. No, no trees coming down. So, so when I, but when I read this, because we're on the short end of the eight to ten year lifespan, and I, I read Ed's description, we've got major delamination and surface cracking. For David, it'd be worth just a quick follow up with Ed that why we're having major delamination and surface cracking if it's a function of how it was done the last time or the materials used. I got to believe that that factors into the quality of the road surface that gets put in so that we know that when you you succeed with the state and away we go you know that's all yeah i'll check in with that a lot of the issues come from improper drainage the, uh, the a lot of our roads, roads aren't on road beds they're right. it's over a ledge it's just yeah. right, ledge there's no drainage the ditches on the side there's yeah. no um, shoulders yeah that kind of thing but i'll um, find out more yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. This is what this would be a grinding handover surfacing, not right. just plopping over the top. Good. Okay. All right. So yep, Great, great. Thanks Excellent. for doing that, Paul. That's that's a great thought. Okay, we have a um, a payroll warrant. We should do that. It's a payroll warrant um, for the town administrator's salary. Do we have a motion on that? So moved. Sorry. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Three guys? Good. Okay. Did we do the reserve fund? Uh, it was taken off the agenda. It's, uh, it's moved to next the, the, uh, Wednesday night. The town accountant wanted to do a little more uh, calculating, I guess. Okay. All right, David, do you have any town administrator business or reports that you want to? Uh, the, the only thing I was going to. Um, 
read was um, a notice we received from Eversource, which is a former NSTAR. And it's just a notice saying that they're going to be doing their aerial patrols of um, infrared patrols of the, the lines. Um, the patrols will be conducted along their right of ways and scheduled to begin on Monday, April 13th, weather pit permitting and doing the whole system will, will take four to five days. So sometime in that time period, you'll see a helicopter um, with a blue stripe and a registration 37WA and that's NSTAR checking their lines. So they check them from helicopter? Yeah. No, it, it is, they, I, I've seen it, they do it about every four or five years, and it's very interesting. You saw with the high tension wires? The high tension wires, and you'll see there'll be somebody strapped out on the outside of the helicopter. It really is quite interesting to watch. So that's the guy who lost the bed or something, is that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. they, okay. didn't, they didn't know he was out there. Yeah. So that's um, starting April, Monday, April 13th. Okay. So that's the only notice I have. All right. And, and, and what are they looking for? Do you know? Are they looking to make sure there's no vegetation growing up? or It's an infrared um, patrol, so I would think that there's some sort of looking for a loss of transmission through the... I see. Uh, across the lines and what, yeah. things like that, yeah. Okay, good. If you're tapping into one of those, you're not going to be tapping in for long. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right, good. Um, selectman reports, anybody? No. no. Uh, next meeting, Paul, you, uh, you would request a change in meeting. I think we've set 415 as the, the date. And um, yep. Paul's indicated we could start a little bit earlier. Right? It's going to be hard for you to get out of Boston. <laughs> sometimes it's harder to get out. I mean, it's easier to get out earlier sometimes. Yeah, no, I just want to. To get you on your way earlier. Yeah, that's nice of you. Yeah, yeah. That, that um, night, so I can do the regular time. I can do later, early. I, I could do five o'clock if if uh, Peter's able to do that. Otherwise, it'd be just yeah, six. I could do five. I could okay. do five. Okay. So All right, great. So we'll try five o'clock on the fifteenth. Are we gonna have a bunch of uh, agenda items? We've pushed a whole bunch. Yeah, and there. that's our last meeting before. It's a number uh, of small ones. Town meeting also. And um, I think the the biggest one is the. We were trying to pull something together explaining the finance department. Oh, changes. yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that would be good if you could uh, be on yeah. camera explaining those. That'd yeah, we're great. still working. Yeah, okay, we're good. We're good. good. We're All right. Good All right. Um, you might as well go ahead and um, just state that you'll be meeting before town meeting at April Well, 28th. that's right. We'll be meeting April 28th 5 at 5 p.m. in advance of town meeting, and it will be meeting in Dover at right. the um, at the Linquist Lin Common. What time does town meeting start? Six? Seven. Six. Uh, so we're meeting at six. six. We're, meeting oh, yeah. we're meeting at six p.m. Two hours. Do we? Yeah, no, no. We're meeting at six p.m. Okay. Okay. The chairs are bigger there too. It won't be like when we were in Pine Hill and we had to sit in the tiny chairs. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody is um, nobody is anticipating a second night. No. Okay. That's always a bad thing That's, to say. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't curse. <laughs> money down. <laughs> That would be nice. Do, uh, do we anticipate any any uh, big issues for town meeting? Just the um, just that that EA zoning um, issue and um, the Money. Woodland Golding. Yeah. And uh, maybe maybe the um, the other planning thing about outdoor entertainment. But I think that's it. Okay. Those are pretty much the only. You don't think the government task force issue will be. Uh, Subject to a lot of discussion? I don't think so. Not with their support, your support, and advisory support. I, I, okay. I think that's. Is George the spokesmodel on that one, or is it you? Or I think it's George. George. Okay, good. George good, good. Yes, I think just those three are what I, what we had identified yesterday as being the problem child of this warrant. Okay. All right. I bet you the kennel one will bite us a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a joke earlier. Oh, that was good. <laughs> All right, good. Um, so now we have a. Uh, we'll um, up the wrong tree or not. <laughs> we have a motion. Um, a motion to go into executive session at this point. Um, do we have to wait until 6:45, David? Did no, you? it's okay. not a hearing. It's oh, you get a question quick, first. Quick comment. Yeah, comment. Okay. Easter has come and gone. 
I think it'd be nice if the chairman then took down the Christmas wreaths. Okay, I think with the separation of church and state, we really can't get into that, Elliot. But thank you for the, I, I'm just for the comment. Be nice. Okay, <laughs> duly noted. Okay. Um, <coughs> I move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session to discuss a complaint filed by our residents as it pertains to General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A1, and I have determined that discussing this in open session may have a detrimental effect on the town's possible litigating position. The board will not return to a public session. I need a second and a roll call vote. I second. Motion seconded by Mr. Caruso. Having a second, we will now have a roll call vote. Mr. Durensis. Votes no. No. Mr. Caruso. Aye. And Mr. Jimo. Aye. By a vote of two to one, the open session is now closed. We will not be returning to public session. We are now in executive session.